In this demonstration, we're going to look at how to record and playback audio. Now, this is an example of a new project, and I've used Android 2.3.3. And the only thing I've set up so far is my main XML, my layout. Um, so I have four buttons, and I have each button set up to go to the same method. So if I click on this button, uh, given each one an ID that I'll be referencing in my code, but each button is going to be going to button tapped. So we have an on click that's going to run the button tapped method. So in our Java code, we're going to set up our button tapped to recognize each of these button taps and then do something in particular for each one. So this is going to start recording. This will stop the recording. This will allow us to play back what we just recorded, and this will allow us to stop playing back our recording. Now, as far as testing this and playing it back, the best thing to do is to play it on a test device. But if you don't have that, you can get a little bit of a sound out from your emulator. And one thing that you want to make sure of is that your emulator is set up so that it can record audio. So if you go into your device manager, your virtual device manager, and I'm just going to pick this real 3D one. If you go into edit, you want to make sure, first of all, that you have an SD card, because in this example, we're going to be saving your recorded video to an SD card. So let's just say for so that we have some size in here for our SD card. And then we have, I have properties in here already for this, but I do wanna make sure that I'm gonna be able to record. So if I click new, I can select from a bunch of different properties for this particular virtual device. So I'm gonna choose audio recording support and okay. And then there was also one in there for audio playback support. And just to be on the safe side, I am going to go in and choose the SD card support as well. So now that I've updated my virtual device with these options, oh, let's see, SD card size is invalid, nine. So let me put in, we'll put in 10. Okay, now I'm able to click the edit AVD button to make the changes and I can close that. So you want to make sure that your virtual device is set up to support recording and playing back audio. Now, uh, on my emulator, when I do play it back, it is muffled and garbled. It's not the best playback result, but you can at least test to see if your app does record and will play back. Okay, so to set this up now, I'm going to go into my main Java file and we can start setting this up. One way to record audio is through using the media recorder class. And since we want to play it back also in this application, we need to also use the media player class. So I'm going to set these up. Okay. And um, I also need to import these in. So I'm going to have a media player and I'll also have a recorder. And we're also going to need a place to store our output. So we're going to create a string called output file. And in our code down here, we're also going to specify where that is and what the name of the file is going to be. So after our main layout is inflated, we're going to put our output file in here. We're going to say to get external storage directory and this is the name of the file that we're going to name it and uh, that audio format is third generation partnership project which is the most common format for audio so I'm going to come in here and also import environment okay so now we have uh, a path and a file name for where we're going to store our audio file Okay, next we're going to build in our button tapped method. So what this is going to do is um, 
Remember in our main XML file, we have our buttons connected to a button tapped method. So this is what we want it to do. And I need to import view. So our button tapped method is going to contain a switch statement that is going to do something different based on which button was selected. So let me paste in some code and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so we have switch statement, which is going to get the ID of what button was tapped. And so, for example, the first one where we have the start button, we have the RID start button. So the button knows the name or the ID of the button that was tapped. So our first case statement is going to do a try and catch. And I've got it bro broken out to do begin recording for the start button, stop recording for the finish button. The play button is going to play the recording. And then the stop button will stop the playback of the recorded audio. And we have all of these error warnings because we don't have any of these methods created yet. So I'm just going to go through and create these methods and then we'll add some code to each of those. Okay, so I can come down here and see each of the methods that have been added. So uh, we'll start with this begin recording and I'm gonna get rid of that comment. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to release the media recorder in case we've already started using it or it's already open. So I'm going to create another method called ditch media recorder. And of course, this is going to say it hasn't been created yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And then in this, we're going to set it up so that if the recorder is already created, if it's not already null, then we're going to release it. Set up the recorder if the recorder is not equal to null, which means we have a recorder object, then we want to release it. So now back in my begin recording method, next thing we're going to do is set up the location of where our file output should be. So where our recorded file is going to be stored. So we're referencing our output file that we created up here and gave it the specifics of the name of the file and the location on the external storage drive. Next, we want to check to see if there is a file that's already recorded. And if it is, we want to get rid of it because we're going to overwrite it. So if our out file already exists, we're going to delete it. Okay, and now we're actually ready to start implementing our media recorder. So we're going to create a new media recorder object called recorder, and we're going to set up some of its properties like the audio source and the output format. So I'm going to say recorder, and we'll start with set audio source, and we're going to specify audio source, and this is how it's going to record. So in our case, we're going to tell it to use, and you can see some of the different options in here. We can use the camcorder. We can use a voice call if there's voice recognition. The uh, voice downlink and voice uplink. The uplink side of a call would be the voice of the phone's user. The downlink side of the call are the sounds coming from the other end of the call. So you could actually record incoming calls and you can also record what you're saying on the phone as well. In this case, we're just choosing microphone. So we'll be using the device's microphone. And we're also going to set the output format. And this is, again, you can see some of the different options that we have. And we're going to be using the third generation partnership project, which is the three underscore GPP. And next we set up the audio encoder or how the audio should be encoded. So we're going to choose audio encoder and the type is AMR underscore NB. If you're working on something that is before 2.3.3 or before gingerbread, you want to set the encoder to the AMR underscore NB, which is 
adaptive multi-rate narrowband audio codec, which is how the audio will be encoded. If it's later than 2.3.3, you can use the adaptive multi-rate wideband or the AAC, which is advanced audio coding. So I'm right on 2.3.3, so I'm going to go with the older version of the adaptive multi-rate narrowband. Okay, next I'm going to set the output file and then our path we've already defined as our string output file. Okay, now that we have these things set up, we can finally prepare the recorder and then start it. Okay, now we have unhandled exception, uh, add throws declaration, or surround with a try catch. So I'm going to put a, a throws declaration around this. With that set up, now we can go in and work on stopping the recording once the stop button is clicked. So we'll go up here to the stop recording method. And in essence, what we want to do is tell it to stop recording. So if there is a recorder running, we want it to stop. So if the recorder is not equal to null, recorder stop. So those two are set up now to begin starting and stopping recording. But we're going to go ahead and set up the playback and stop playback so that we can get everything to all work at once. So just as when we started to record, when we want to start playing back, we want to check and make sure that there is no media player that's already around and working. So we're going to do a ditch media player method. So we have uh, the ditch media recorder. We're going to do a ditch media player. So I'm going to create this method. And in here, in a similar fashion, we're going to check to see if the media player is not empty, we want to uh, release it. So if the media player is not equal to null, we'll do a try and catch to catch any exceptions. So it's going to try to release it, and if we have any problems with that, it will uh, print an exception error. And to finish out our play recording method, we have a new media player, and we're telling it to get the data source from the output file. And here I have another um, throws declaration, so I am going to put up in here so that it can try to catch any problems so that the whole thing doesn't crash. So we're going to get our data source, and then we prepare the media player, and then we start the media player with our data source. And then finally, our stop playback. If the media player is not empty, then we're going to tell it to stop. And that should pretty much be it. Now, the only other thing that you really need to plan on doing for either your app is to set up your the manifest file. We need to give it permissions in order to be able to record audio and also to write to your external storage device. So I'm going to open up the XML and I'm going to include in those permissions. So we have the Android permission record audio and the Android permission to write to the external storage. So after saving everything, I should be able to run and test it. So we'll test this. I'll do start recording, testing, testing, one, two, three, finish recording. Now play recording back. This might be a little tricky on this speaker, but we'll see. Turn my sound all the way up. Okay, it was distorted, but uh, if you actually run this and test it on a device, uh, it's much clearer. So I think there's just some issues in playing things back again through the emulator. So with that, we learned how to start recording by using the media recorder and stop recording with media recorder. and use the media player to play back the recording and then stop playback of the recording.